Today we received news from the Missouri Supreme Court uh, on a pending case we had before them that students from the Kansas City, Missouri School District that is now currently unaccredited will be able to transfer into surrounding districts. Now we understand uh, the ramifications of that. We have been reviewing the law. We will comply with the law, but at the same time we will also look at our capacity uh, measures. We'll look at uh, uh, transportation issues that may arise and we'll also uh, make sure that we protect the taxpayers and the students that are currently living in this school district so we don't uh, lose any services that those students are now receiving. It's kind of a tough balancing act, isn't it? It is, it is. It's, uh, but at the same time, we in Raytown believe every student has a right uh, to a quality education. Every student that enrolls in this school district, uh, we try to guarantee that for them. And that's our goal, to bring them uh, to that point in their uh, public education life. And uh, we've said from the beginning that it doesn't matter who we get in our school district, we will educate them, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, what about the finances? Well, the finance, that's a tricky part uh, of this um, whole uh, transfer issue is uh, how will the tuition be paid, what is the amount of tuition that will be paid, uh, currently, we have set tuition for students transferring from unaccredited districts. Uh, once students uh, are enrolled in, uh, are, or come up for enrollment, we will require that that tuition be paid up front. And once we receive that tuition, those students will be allowed to enroll in our district if the capacity is there. We will follow the DESE guidelines. Uh, and, and when we look at capacity to make sure our class sizes are not too large, we understand the research. We know what it tells us about smaller class sizes and academic achievement of students. But at the same time, we would ask that DESE take a hard look at a plan, one, a plan that I was involved in, in creating in the end of October, uh, a new path to excellence, along with 17 other superintendents and members of the cooperating school districts of Kansas City and Greater St. Louis uh, and Southwest Center uh, on how we can keep schools uh, accredited and those that fall into provisional can get back to accredited. Uh, and move away from a punitive uh, system into one that all stakeholders, communities, uh, the, the underlying uh, principles of our, of our discussions was every student, every school, every community matters. And we would hope that DESE now, uh, after what they've seen happen in Normandy with a school district that's on the verge of bankruptcy, Riverview Gardens will be on the verge of bankruptcy in the next year, uh, the system we currently have in place is not working. So we have to look for new ways uh, to solve this problem. And we think the new path to excellence is one of those ways. Dr. Markley, can you speak to the timing of the ruling? The timing of the ruling? Uh, well, it's, it's nearing second, the end of first semester, the, end of, uh, the beginning of uh, second semester. Um, as far as transfers at semester, that would be difficult uh, to achieve. Uh, we anticipate following DESE's recommendations and guidelines. Uh, and enrolling those students in 2014 and 2015. Uh, we will have to work on a process to make that as smooth as possible, uh, looking probably at the St. Louis model to make that happen. Uh, but we have, currently have some work we need to complete. We need to also make sure that uh, these policies are in, uh, in conjunction with the law uh, and that uh, our school board will set a policy that will test uh, uh, litigation. Speak also to the, I'm sorry if anybody has one, is that okay? Speak also a little bit to the outcome of this ruling on the St. Louis side and what's happening to districts there. Well, currently, uh, if, if uh, you've been looking at the, uh, uh, primarily the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, but Riverview at Gardens in Normandy uh, were unaccredited. And in June of 2013, the Supreme Court handed down the Breitenfeld case. It was originally the Turner case, but changed names uh, midstream. Uh, students were allowed to transfer in a matter of two months and we saw uh, well over 2,000 students from those two districts transfer to the county schools with a price tag well over 36 million dollars. Some students riding one way two hours on a school bus to get to their school depending on the choice of the unaccredited district to the receiving district. Um, we have seen um, uh, students that are remaining that did not transfer in a district like Normandy uh, you will see the services that they have or had prior to the ruling by the Supreme Court uh, with the tuition amount being paid, those services 
certainly would be diluted. Um, so the system we have right now, it's the law we have in the books and it's very vague. Uh, it speaks not to how the tuition is paid, it speaks not to how you determine capacity. The court ruled on what they had before them and that was students in an unaccredited district have a right to transfer to an accredited district in an adjoining county or counties. So we have to find a way uh, and think about Kansas City at this point. All of a sudden they have hundreds, maybe thousands of students that are transferring. There will be students that will not transfer and they'll be left behind. And those tuition payments that will be flowing out of the Kansas City, Missouri School District will be diluting the service for those kids. So we're asking them to get better academically, yet they are being siphoned of funds to get that very job done. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. It's time we put, put aside uh, political agendas, uh, political reform, and public education uh, in Jefferson City, and us as superintendents in public schools and public school districts come together and find a solution. And we think that solution is the path to excellence. We think that will help uh, ease uh, the transfer situation, and it will also help keep districts uh, financially stable, and at the end of the day, hopefully accredited. Maybe one last thing, and that is speak to what the five school districts that brought the case uh, asked the court to examine. We asked the courts to examine uh, whether or not the transfers were an unfunded mandate, meaning those students that were coming over to our school districts from a, a district that's unaccredited, that has high poverty, uh, high poverty rates, meaning socioeconomic um, uh, free and reduced, and, and what it would cost to bring those students up to par, up to the standards that are expected by Missouri and certainly expected by Raytown. Uh, and we determine those costs based on the services that we currently provide for students that are residing in our school district. Some students, several students that have moved from the Kansas City, Missouri School District into our district and, and other districts around. And the services and the interventions that we provide cost money. And the amount of tuition uh, that we require being paid was not going to be the same amount of tuition that Kansas City was going to pay. So we brought uh, a case uh, an argument of an unfunded mandate because if we were to accept those students and spend those dollars, those extra dollars it would take to get those students where we want them to be and that's academically successful, uh, we would be diluting the services we have that the taxpayers expect in this school district. Do you know roughly what your class size is and what you try to keep it at as far as? It's across the board depending on grade level. Uh, we use uh, the DESE standards. We like to try to keep it to the desirable standard. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you exactly what those are. But we know in a kindergarten classroom, uh, one teacher to particularly maybe 20 students is where you'd like to be, uh, especially at the early years. I mean, we hear all uh, of the conversation surrounding early childhood education, and one could argue that kindergarten is early childhood, five years old. Um, and how important that is and how important it is that teachers connect and have the ability to help those students that are behind, um, we want those class numbers low. Uh, if we continue to uh, receive students uh, in, in that age bracket, uh, it will cost a lot of dollars uh, to get those numbers where they need to be. Anything else, folks? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say you didn't get to? I think I talked about the plan of, of excellence and how we need help from our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. They certainly have been in the news here lately on some issues. Uh, now it's time to, to get a laser-like focus and, uh, and, and work together to make sure that all students have access to an appropriate and excellent education.